welcome back. If you're just joining the series, you may consider watching the setup video so you're ready to keep coding and learning. In this video, we will learn about the C in CSS, which stands for cascading. Understanding the CSS cascade is critical in successfully styling web interfaces. Check the video description for a link to an article with the video transcript and code samples from this lesson. To begin this lesson, open our project in VS Code. If you are just joining us, you can download the starter project to catch up. See the link in the video description. In the terminal, type the start command npm run start to run the project. For this lesson, we're going to start by reviewing what we've created so far in this series. In the previous lesson, episode 10, we created additional styles intended to apply to the index.html file. As you've learned, that's the page that appears first when we launch our project. We put the styles we created in our single CSS file, style.css. However, that file is also included in several of our other HTML files. First, in the browser, let's look at our semantic-layout.html file. All the type now uses a sans serif font, and the h1 and h2 styles look like what we created in the last lesson. Moving on to the blog-layout.html file, you can see the same styles here as well. And you can probably guess, but if we open card-layout.html, the styles are again being applied from the style.css file, including the hover style on the link. The exception is for our css-box-model.html file. If you recall, we removed the style sheet link in the head and instead used the style tag to contain this page's styles. Using the style tag is one method of applying what's called scope to a set of styles. Only styles on the same page as the rules within the style tag can receive those styles. On the other hand, the reason we saw all the same style changes across the other files was due to them linking to the same style.css file. And within that file, use of element names as selectors means these styles were not scoped, but applied globally. Global application of styles means that, for example, every h1 the browser encounters will be styled as defined by the h1 CSS rule. Typical web experiences use a mix of global and scoped styling. One way to begin to scope styles is by using classes, as we learned in episode 10. Let's open the index file in the browser to review and set up our screen to be split between VS Code and the browser. Then open the style.css file in VS Code. If we scroll down to our container class rules, Recall that we chose to create classes instead of just use div as the selector. The primary reason was that if we just use div, then the styles created here would apply on any div the browser found, not just on this page, but across our application. As an experiment, let's change the container class to instead use div as the selector. We'll also comment out the container dash dash raised class. A reminder that comments are defined in CSS with slash asterisk, then your comment text, asterisk slash. Save, and the page will not appear very different, except for the loss of the box shadow on the second div. But now let's open the index.html file and add a div around the paragraph, or p tags. Save and see that it has picked up the styles that we only wanted applied to the divs around the lists. Use of CSS classes prevents unwanted styles thanks to the scoping behavior. Let's undo the changes we made by removing the div around the paragraph and reinstating the container classes. As for global styles, typography is an area where global application is typically desirable behavior especially for rules such as font family, font size, line height, 
and sometimes margin spacing. This assists in a cohesive reading experience across your website or application. The way we added font family within the body rule in the last lesson was actually your first rule taking advantage of the CSS cascade. The cascade refers in part to the behavior of descending styles inheriting from their ancestors. Since body is a required parent tag for the entire HTML page, each typography element is considered a descendant and therefore inherits styles defined in body. Let's demonstrate this by adding another property to our body rule. We'll add a rule for color green and then save. Heading levels two through six are now green, but not the other text found on the page because they are inheriting from scoped rules. The second key to the cascade is that styles defined last for the same property applied to the same element when and are what is applied by the browser. To demonstrate, let's add a new rule after our existing H1 rule for H2 with color Firebrick. Save and see that the H2 is now a shade of red. Next, at the bottom of our style sheet, add another rule for H2 with color Pale Violet Red. Save and see how the H2 is now a shade of pink. The third key to the cascade is that the order of rules matters unless a rule with what's called higher specificity is used. Classes are one way to add specificity to a rule. To demonstrate, let's add an H2 as the first item in the container divs using the text container headline and save. Then, let's use Inspector to check out these new H2 tags. You may have expected the color to be blue-violet, like the list text. But as Inspector reveals, the H2 rule for pale violet red is applied due to that rule for H2 following our container rule. To change this behavior, we need to scope the H2 color to be specific to container. To do this, we'll create a new rule, which we can place after the existing container rule, which will be container space H2 with the definition color blue violet. Save and see that each container's H2 is now blue violet. This is because we've increased the specificity of the color definition by using a selector that says apply to container H2s, which is more specific than apply to H2s. We'll do one item of cleanup now that we've created this rule, which is to remove the color definition from the container class and extend our new rule to apply to container as well. This reduced duplication assists in keeping related rules together and also reduces errors in applying the cascade when you are explicit about how properties are defined. There are a few more ways to increase specificity, and we will learn those and continue learning about how to be mindful of the cascade in our upcoming lessons. Stay tuned for the next video where we will learn more about structure and styling considerations for making our interfaces accessible to all users. Be sure to subscribe Support this project on Patreon. The link is in the video description.